You're listening to the Platform Launchers podcast. I'm John Stonge, and we are recording right now in front of a live audience like we do nearly every week. And today we have a very special guest that I'd like to introduce to you. Our guest is Melissa Hughes. And Melissa is an author and a speaker who has experienced great success building her platform on TikTok. In fact, just a moment ago, I asked our members club uh, if, and they're all live here on the call here with me, uh, or many of them are live here on the call, I should say, if anyone had at this point thought about building their platform using TikTok as one of the marketing engines. And so far, we have not as a group ventured into that. So this is fresh material or a fresh group for Melissa to speak into. But I had the chance to hear Melissa speak last month at PodFest. Couldn't wait to introduce her to our members club. Also, couldn't wait to invite her to be a guest on our podcast. So with all that said, Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here today. Well, we're, we're super grateful to have you here, and uh, I was really, really impressed with the things that I had the opportunity to hear you share uh, last month when you spoke at Podca- uh, PodFest. I thought that that went really well, and uh, afterward, I, I was really hoping that we'd have the opportunity to introduce you to our members club and introduce you to our podcast listening audience, and I thought what you shared was really, really valuable, and so I'm going to ask you a series of questions here okay. that I hope will introduce your story and your content to to others. And my second question is really all about your story, but I'm going to save it for my second question and kind of, and kind of start off this way as odd as this may seem, but in our membership community, we often talk about the five D's of platform development. And the first D involves discovering your message. That's the the big foundational piece that we all wrestle with because everything gets built off of that. And so I just wanted to start off by just simply asking you, what is your message and how did you discover it? That's a great question. So um, I think at the core of who I am, my message is really how can whatever I'm doing um, bring the light of Christ to people? So I think that's like the, if you were to think of like a tree, that would be like the trunk of it all. But the expression of what that looked like um, for me in my life and how it looks now looks different. And so the message that I share on TikTok has a lot to do with motherhood and like helping women find joy in motherhood, helping women um, overcome a fear of motherhood, which is kind of my personal story and just equipping moms to just like find the joy in this season. Um, And so that's kind of like the expression of what that looks like right now is more of like a, I guess you could say covert rather than like overt, like sharing the gospel online, but I'm slowly transitioning into, um, sharing more with, um, an audience just about how to use your platform to share the light of Christ with people and what that looks like and how to use your voice and how to encourage people. And just to be honest with you, the whole online space to me, if Jesus were alive today, he would be online. (laughs) He would be sharing. He would be encouraging. He'd be communicating with the world online because it's such a great platform. So um, I hope that answered your question, but the core of it is how we can inspire people and faith in Christ and uplift people. Absolutely. And it wouldn't surprise anyone here on, on our call live or anyone listening to the podcast. So, so much of the content that I've been creating through the years is faith-based content. And it's not the only thing I create, but it's, you know, at the core of what I care most about, that's what I care most about. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, to hear other people that are valuing uh, things of that deeper or eternal nature is something that is certainly wonderful. And I knew that about you ahead of time. And so even inviting you to be on the call tonight, it doesn't surprise me to hear that that's a big part of what's motivating you to create your content. And like I alluded to just a moment ago, you became involved in using TikTok specifically as a, like a marketing tool or as a way to just communicate with lots of people. And uh, I wonder if maybe you could just tell us your story about how you happen to get involved in, in using TikTok of all things. And, and did you even think that that was something you were going to be using? No, not in a million gazillion years, not even 
close to remotely in my head. Um, just basically kind of what happened is in 2020, I lost my job. So, you know, a lot of people face some unexpected circumstances and in order to keep like our family's health benefits and we were looking for a house, I needed a job. And the only one that was available at that time, the people that were essential childcare workers. So I started working in childcare and I would drop my children off at one end of the building and go look after other people's kids, which for any mom listening knows that that's not the dream. <laughs> that is not the dream. Um, and so I was really in this space where I was just praying and asking God, you know, the plan that I had kind of got derailed. So what's the plan? What's happening? And anyone in transition understands transit transitions just suck. They just really do. Um, and so I felt like I was really in this space of like, what's the next step? And I had nothing for months, nothing. And then one day in, um, uh, just one day I was praying about it and I really just felt God start impressing on my heart to start recording videos and posting them online. And, um, I had really no idea what that meant or what that looked like or what it should even be, but it was just so clear, so obvious to me. And that happened for about a month. And then at the end of that month, I ended up talking to my husband and was like, Hey, I just, for whatever real for whatever reason, like going on social media seems to be like what something I should do and like posting videos. So he just said, okay, well, let's just pray. So we prayed literally this simple prayer. It was at the end of the night when we were hanging out, God, if this is something Melissa should give her time to, would you just make it clear? And then five days later, I randomly uploaded this video of my kids sledding onto TikTok, which was a platform I'd kind of heard of that I knew was like a video platform but I had uploaded it just to figure out how the, how to even post down there. And the next morning that video generated 22 million views. <laughs> and I landed a spot on the Kelly Clarkson show a couple of days after that. <laughs> and so we felt like that was a clear sign. <laughs> we felt like reasonably clear. <laughs> yeah. I felt like maybe I was hearing correctly. Um, and so from that point, actually I continued posting I had to figure out obviously TikTok in the midst of a lot of media attention. And I had no idea really what the app was or how to even use it. So I just continued working my childcare job. And in the midst of being a mom and working full time, the only time I had was my lunch break. So I would record my TikToks in my car on my lunch break. And I grew my account to over today, 225,000 followers um, by just recording videos in my car just to deal with motherhood. And so, um, and now, uh, I actually, in the beginning of this year, I was able to leave my childcare job and I now do this full time and I work with entrepreneurs, podcasters. I love working with to leverage that platform, to share their story, their product or their service so that they can grow their business or grow their podcast. And it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. My, my question was, you know, so what's what's happened since, you know, all this all this blew up and it's really turned into something that that you have really turned around into a service that you're able to offer other people that are really thinking about getting involved in these things and and doing these things. I mean, how, how has this changed your day to day life? Oh, it's completely changed my day to day life, to be honest. Um, the only thing I really wanted when I for like when I was obviously lost my job was I just want to be able to spend more time with my children, right? Like I get that those years are there. I have a five five year old now and a four year old, and I just don't want to waste that time. I didn't want to miss it. So now I have a job that I'm able to work from home and be with my kids. Um, but so in that regard, like that has completely changed my life. But also, I ended up having a children's book company reach out to me and they made a kid's book out of one of my TikToks. And so now I have like a, I'm a published author, um, for a kid's book. And, um, as far as like working with people, I'm, I feel like I'm living the dream in the sense of I'm, I'm working with people that are talking to me every day about what they're passionate about, what they love. And I'm helping them showcase that and share their story, which I never realized was something that I 
love doing, but I guess God has better plans, right? Yeah. I hope people know that (laughs) if you are in transition right now, you can trust him. He's got a good plan for your life. He knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because when you describe, you know, March of 2020, when everything was changing and, and the career that you had been serving in all of a sudden that opportunity went away, that, that had to be a very confusing time, but we're not that far removed from all of that. And your life is drastically different from that. And you don't seem too upset about it. You seem rather happy about these opportunities that you've been blessed with. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So do you, do you want to do something fun here uh, while we're, uh, while we're on the call here and, uh, and, and just kind of do it like a case study here of what advice would Melissa Hughes give to a, a member of platform launchers? Okay. This one's going to sting guys. So are you ready? <laughs> Brace yourself. Brace yourself now. Uh, now. All right. Do you have general advice you're going to give, or do you want me to pick someone that that's the other, that's the other part of this. Oh, Oh, <laughs> I had the general <laughs> advice. But we'll play it your way, however you want to play. If you have, if you want to pick somebody, I'd be happy to give advice. Well, I I was going to, I was going to pick B because B is the one that introduced me to you. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I was going to see if B felt like playing along with this, uh, this next part of the call. So B, are you in a position here where you feel uh, apt? I didn't even warn B that I might do something like this. So B, is this okay with you? This is one of the risks of being on a, uh, a, a live call. All right. So, uh, B, are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, but it's loud in here. Are you okay with that? Oh, totally. That, this is, okay. That's when you're recording in front of a live audience, you get background sounds. That's all right. All right. Okay. So, B, uh, give a plug for your platform for our listeners so that they could hear it. And then let's let Melissa speak into what you do and how you might be able to use TikTok to kind of elevate what you're building. Okay, so I speak to people about the labels they collect through life and how they block us from achieving our goals and really showing up authentically in the world. Um, And then when I go to make TikTok videos, all of my own labels are like, ping, ping, (laughs) if I'm being honest. (laughs) Yes, yes, I totally understand that. And um, the advice that I would have to give to you would be you literally have to talk to the camera like you're talking to your best friend. Um, And one of the biggest struggles I think that people feel is, you know, how am I going to come across? What are people going to think? And they go, you go through this stage in the beginning where you feel cringy. And to be honest, I still feel cringy um, when I do some of my videos. You have to embrace the cringe because nobody else, like you feel it, it feels cringy for you. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm on camera and my voice. And what am I saying about like, it all comes in your head, but you really do just need to push through the cringe, talk to the camera. Like you're talking to your best friend and just start posting my best performing video. The video that be actually became a children's book. I thought was the cringiest video. And I hated after I posted, it, I was like, I stayed awake at night. I was like, why, why did I post that? It was so dumb, like so stupid. It has gone viral on every platform. It has like, oh, it has over millions of views and I'm so glad that I didn't delete it. So embrace the cringe. All right. So is that like the tagline from Melissa Hughes now? Embrace the cringe. Yeah. I need to trademark that. (laughs) There should be, yeah, she should be, she should have a merch store, right? Embrace the cringe t-shirts. Yeah. So ever since I met Melissa, I've been like studying TikTok, which is so typical, like overthinking it. But I will tell you, I do have a video. It is done. It's I just need to be brave enough to release it. So I I will do that by tonight. How does that sound? Oh, I'm excited. And then I want you to tag me in it so I can follow back and comment. OK, I will. Nice. Thanks, Thanks for being thanks, a good John, sport. For throwing me to the wolves. Yeah, Yeah, I know. I know. I knew you'd be okay with it. Thanks, B. And thanks, Melissa. All right, Melissa, you kind of you got my interest peak now because you were about to say something there that you said, all right, this is going to be painful. So now Mm -hmm. I want to hear what that part was going to be, too. What's the painful thing that we as platform launchers or anyone listening to the show right now needs to hear? Yeah. Okay. so here it comes. It's Uh coming at (laughs) you. For social media, which we're all, we all, whether you like it or not, you got to be on there. If you have a business, whatever, 
But if your plan for social media is to continue posting static images, you are going to be left behind. You have got to learn the art of short form video if you want to be successful now and in the future. All right. And, and, and I think that that's, I, well, I'll just speak for myself. Others could speak for themselves, but I, I know for me, posting an image is so much easier to craft, right? Or to retake or to uh, be selective about than uh, posting short form video because you're, you're really, you're much more vulnerable when you're posting short form video. Absolutely. Yep. And but I got to embrace of, the cringe. Yeah, right. And yeah, and a lot of companies right now have a lot of people doing the the video or the um, pictures and the Canva posts for them. And now it's like, right. uh-oh, what are we going to do? So yeah, no, this is a new way to think about it. But, you know, as we know, um, you know, TikTok was the most popular website surpassing Google in 2021, correct? That's right. So that's, that's right. significant. <clears throat> All right. So in addition to TikTok, how are you delivering content to your audience? The reason I'm, I'm bringing that question up is uh, when we talk about platform development here, we're talking about having, you know, a lot of times many of us have a main leg to our platform, but then we also have several different things kind of holding it up. And, and so usually there's, you know, there's just a variety of things that we have that are working together to build stability and uh, kind of help uh, cross promote what we're building. Mm -hmm. So uh, in addition to TikTok, how are you delivering content to your audience? Yeah. So I have obviously my TikTok audience and then I have people on Instagram. And then my plan is I'm hoping to start my own podcast, um, hopefully starting it, launching it in the fall, starting at end of summer, launching it in the fall, um, just to kind of you know, go deeper and give more nuggets and help people get to know me more. Um, so that is in the works. Awesome. And I also see you have, you have your website and mm -hmm. I'm assuming you have an email list as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so you have multiple legs there. That's, that's a, uh, a, a smart way to develop what you're doing or to, to give it strength. And, and I think a lot of times people kind of approach platform development without really thinking much about the concept of a platform. They think just about building one thing, but when you build multiple things, you're ending, you end up with a much stronger end result. And yeah. so, so, and so the newest thing to be looking for then in the fall is Melissa Hughes podcast. Does it have a tentative name yet? Or is that a secret? The tentative name would be she can share. Wonderful. She can share. So it's not embrace the cringe. It's she can share. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should do embrace the cringe. That, that's kind of catchy. That came to me, but I'm kind of digging it. Yeah, I don't know. You, you, you said it a couple of times there. And I, I thought that's that's clearly I mean, it's good counsel, right? When you're helping us uh, do this. But I think your, your focus with she can share is probably also about helping mothers. Right. And uh, and just helping to encourage them in their in their daily responsibilities and probably their faith as well. Is that correct? Yeah. And hopefully uh, like helping, you know, for me, like I was a mom, but I wanted to figure out a way that I could create an income for myself and like use my voice, use my passions, use my talents. So it's like, you know, maybe you're a mom and you want to figure out how you can do that. And so it's purpose driven as well. Right. Which is fantastic. And that kind of leads into the next thing I really wanted to ask you about. Uh, how has developing your online platform with the different things that you're offering, how has that contributed to your household income? Yeah. I mean, I was able to leave my job. Um, so like I'm that, which from my husband, that was like the number one thing I was like, I'm working so hard. Like <laughs> he's like, right. You got to replace the income. Um, so I've been able to obviously like leave my job and I've replaced my income. Um, and just like, there's so many different ways that I'm learning to capitalize on and streams of income, like as far as what I do. So like there's the consulting or the coaching, but then also because I've grown that audience and there's that influence there, there are brand deals, um, things from Amazon, being an Amazon influencer, getting like commissions from that. 
So I feel like it's opened up different streams of revenue for me, which I'm really trying to just like maximize. Excellent. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and, and so basically at, at this point now, um, you know, as you've got all these different things going on and this continues to build and this is now turned into a, a, a good source of revenue and, and income, it, it sounds like you, you know, you've really boiled down how you help other people with this task. If they want to build a presence on TikTok and they would like to really capitalize on that, you've got a system figured out for them to be able to tap into, correct? Yeah. And so if somebody wants to reach out to you for help and they'd like for, you know, your assistance and, and, uh, and your direction on what to do next, how can they go about reaching you and, and what's the process that you'll bring them through? Yeah. So they can reach me through um, email or through my website. My email is Melissa at Melissa Lee And that's L E A, not L E E. But um, through, so through email um, or my website, Melissa Lee And there's, you can actually download a free TikTok content blueprint for yourself if you're looking to get started. And that is the exact blueprint on how you should be communicating on that platform. Um, so that would be the first thing, you know, it's always easier to contact somebody that's walked the path and have them coach you than try and DIY yourself, take it from someone that wishes they had somebody like that last year. Oh yeah. Um, but, um, the first step really would be to figure out, you know, obviously like what your goal would be with TikTok, but, but then you download the app create your profile, create um, your bio, like what people are going to get from watching your videos. And then you really do just need to start recording and start making content. Um, There's a process that I take my clients through that would be probably different to somebody else just starting out. So if somebody is just like wanting to DIY and just go for it, I would recommend you just start posting and get feedback from, you know, your audience and people. But when they work with me, I have them actually create about 25 pieces of content with me and we go through it and then we have a launch day. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, Melissa Lee Hughes.com and Lee being spelled L E A. So Melissa Lee Hughes.com. Be sure to check that out. I also saw on your website, people, people can schedule, a discovery call with you there. Mm-hmm. If that's something that they're interested in, in searching uh, or interested in, uh, in pursuing, I should say. And, uh, and that's really a, a great way that they can get started. If you're interested in building something on TikTok that can let then that could ultimately shed a light on the other things that you're building. Melissa's got a great system and lots of great experience. And you're also, the other nice thing is, you know, you'll be dealing with somebody of character if you reach out to her. So I'd encourage you, if this is something that you're serious about building, she's a good resource that you definitely want to be following and definitely want to be tapping into the things that she offers. And in just a second, our members club is going to be asking Melissa all sorts of questions related to TikTok and, and some of the things that, that uh, we could be doing as we're building our platforms. But if you're listening to the podcast and you're not a member yet, We'd encourage you to go over to platformlaunchers.com. You could take a free two-week test drive of our membership course here or our membership community and jump on a a few calls with us if you'd like and see if this is for you. You could also access the full 60-minute recording, including the conversation we're about to have with Melissa as we kind of just, you know, pounce and ask a whole bunch of our questions here and, and really try and glean from her wisdom. And uh, you could check that out as well if you'd like, but just go to platformlaunchers.com and you'll be able to check that out right away. So Melissa, thanks for being a guest for our podcast. We look forward to chat with you in just a moment here with some more Q&A for our members club. Thank you so much.